guys, Ronan Man here. Hey, uh, we're looking here at the uh, the news today. Uh, this is actually yesterday, but uh, Tiger Woods is now being uh, wow for million time, the millionth time he's being uh, portrayed as a uh, evil guy, bad guy. Um, there's they they really can't get enough of the bad press about Tiger Woods. But what was his look in his eyes there? He's obviously drunk, right? It's not a big deal. Has anybody, nobody that wrote this article, this fucking girl, Christine Brennan, she's never been drunk. She has never looked like that because uh, this is supposed to be the, the low point of his life or something, right? When you're drunk and, you know, you don't fucking keep your hair that, you know, well. and <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, this guy, what is his real crime? Let's look at Tiger Woods. What's his real crime? He has two main crimes that I can see. Uh, maybe maybe a few. But let's say the main one is being too successful, right? So he's too successful at golf, right? And he's also very successful at saving companies. He saved Nike. You know, Nike sponsored him, but it turned out the other way around where he kind of sponsored Nike because he brought them from having no uh, reach outside of, you know, the major sports like basketball and into all these other sports like running and, you know, golf and all, you know, if you go to any golf shop now, there's Nike stuff everywhere. Um, you know, it, it, from that point, it went to a lot of smaller sports and Nike is now like, you don't, you're not surprised to see Nike goods on any kind of a niche a sport, right? And the reason why is Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was a fundamental key feature for Nike, right? So he was very successful in business, right? And he was successful in, in, in athletics, right? And he was very successful, right? In what else? He had a family, right? That Some people consider that successful. Uh, I think it's his biggest mistake. Uh, but he's, I would say he's marginally somewhat successful with women, right? Uh, and the reason why I say that is just very realistically, if you're an athlete, if you have tons of money, if you're on TV all the time, if you're on the news, if you're considered like the finest in your sport, uh, women throw themselves at you. I don't know if you guys realize this. You know, <laughs> I know I'm preaching, preaching to the choir here, but if you if it's never happened to you, and it has happened to me, so I know. But when it, it when it does, when girls absolutely throw themselves at you, it's a really weird feeling. And it's not happening now today. I'm not saying right now. I'm just saying that I this has happened in my life where I went through a period where um, I'll probably talk about it in some episode in the future, but where it was just like girls just like didn't even know me were just throwing themselves at me and could not. You know what I mean? Get me in bed fast enough, and that was, and that was a weird, weird time. And I learned a lot from that. I probably learned the most in that period than I ever learned in my life, and that's why I'm going to talk about it. Somebody said, "Don't talk about sex too much." Listen, the experiences you have with women, especially if you have unique experiences or a lot of experiences, this is the shit. This is what it doesn't get talked about. Nobody talks about it when you put it out there, honestly. It's, it, you're doing the world a favor, the world of guys, and eventually the world of girls too, because the truth sets you free. And uh, this, the way it is now is just a pathetic, right? So don't make fun of people who are trying to help, you know. If someone's putting their stuff out there, you might not understand it. You might be a little jealous of Tiger Woods, right? Because this guy's obviously, you know, the man, but don't let that get past that as a MGTOW. I say get fucking past that. Jealousy has no place in your fucking life, you know. And the reason is because you are on a road of success and good shit is going to happen to you soon if you are disciplined and stick to the track and learn what's really fucking going on in life. Good things are going to happen. And when you, those good things happen, you're going to see what's going to happen is somebody's going to pop up who's going to be jealous of those good things happening to you. And all of a sudden, the light's going to come on and you're going to be like, holy fuck. I was jealous of all those other guys. What an idiot I was. You know? Because you're honest with yourself now. You're like, what a fucking idiot. How could I do that? Like, that was so childish. Because you see when it happens to you, you're just like, you see from the outside, you're like, that is so pathetic. There's nothing stopping that guy from doing what I did, right? But, you know, he sees you as different and all that. But, okay. So, what was his crime? His crime, okay, his crime was getting married. In case you didn't know, his crime, Tiger Woods, is a criminal. Not because he's drunk driving, but that's, you know, that might be a felony or whatever. But his real crime was making the mistake of getting married. So let's deconstruct this. So you think you're a young, cool guy. You're in great shape. 
you're one of the greatest of all time in a sport that is on its rise, okay? And it's a, it's a beautiful sport. I mean, golf is a beautiful sport. Yeah, I fucking love golf. I, it's one of my favorite things to do. I fucking love golf, you know? And I was watching, um, I was watching, uh, was it Big Tao is Freedom? Yeah. And uh, people send donations, and then he smokes cigars and drinks uh, scotch, I believe. And I thought that was super cool, you know? If you want to give donations and I go play golf, that's fucking awesome. I love golf. And I really, to me, it's like the ultimate guy's sport. Uh, well, not the ultimate. I wouldn't say the ultimate. Uh, it's it's one of the awesome sports for guys. And then I'll just give you a quick quick golf thing here, quick golf thing. It's not, it's it, the reason why is because you as a man evolved throwing fucking spears and rocks to kill animals, right? And so you have a good arm, right? Your right arm or your left arm, whatever your left or right handed is, 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 is attuned to all the factors that influence that rock to go hit that fucking bird or hit that animal. And if they weren't, you wouldn't be here today. You have enormous skill with that. You don't need a gun. You don't need a fucking tank. You have your arm. Your arm is, is the most powerful thing. Throwing things take, can take down a fucking elephant, tiger, leopard, bear with a fucking wooden stick or rock. And its proof is that we are still alive. Because we had to do this for millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years as Homo sapiens, right? So when you play golf, what you're doing is you're, you're hitting the ball and it's going, you know, a few hundred meters or whatever. And it's going in the air and the wind is affecting it. The rocks are, the rocks are there. The water's there. The sand is there. You know, the bunker's there. There's so many factors. The length of the grass and the club... You know, the, it, just millions of things, the height of the ball uh, when you're hitting it. There's millions of things affecting it. So as a guy, what I really enjoy, I, I enjoy getting out with the guys. You know, I, I enjoy getting out with the guys. And that's what you do when you play golf. You do a lot of dirty jokes on the golf course. There's a lot of fucking chuckling. There's no women around. There's no cameras. You just fucking have a good time with the guys. And that's one of the best things about golf. And that's what every fucking guy who really plays golf knows. Is that there's so much fucking camaraderie on the golf course among amongst guys, right? And uh, don't be afraid to golf. But uh, so either way, so it's a great man sport because that's what man did: is we threw those spears and our ability to calculate all those things like the wind, the movement of the beast, you know, everything determined our ability to survive in another day. And so golf, what it is, is it's really all those things when you're hitting that ball. When you're hitting that ball hundreds of meters, you're, you're having to calculate all this crap in your mind. And your mind is doing it. Your amazing fucking male mind. It, and, and, your, and your vision and your target and your, your intuition. And, and, and you know what I mean? It's just like, and also your assumptions. You assume this is going to happen when that happens. And if it doesn't happen, that you were wrong, right? Then you lose, right? So it's like everything is tested in real time. And every, it's been said many times, but golf brings out your real personality. So if you cheat, if you're a cheater, you'll see yourself picking up the ball cheating, right? If you are the type of guy like me who will have, you know, I'll be under the fucking tree and I'll, I'll have to hit it 500 times because I can't get it out of there. And somebody will say, well, just fucking take it out. Take it out, running man. Just throw it out there and just take a, take a stroke, right? But I, I prefer myself, I prefer taking 500 strokes under the tree to get the motherfucker out of the tree, you know? I want to get it out, man. I want to do it myself. I, I'm not really worried about the score on the piece of paper versus the other guy. I'm worried about myself. I want to get. I want to fucking do it right. So either way. So, off golf. There's golf. If you never, if you ever wondered why golf is cool, this is one of the many reasons why golf is cool. And a lot of shit's cool. So it's not just golf. Uh, but okay, let's go into Tiger. So Tiger's this great guy, and he married. And after he married, see, if he would have stayed single, this motherfucker would be fine. Tiger Woods would be the man, man. He'd be at the clubs, you know. He'd be walking in the clubs, you know. Woohoo! Tiger Woods is here, you know. There he is over there, you know. You know, I've been in clubs with like famous guys come in and everybody like, everybody tells you silently, hey, so and so is over there, you know. And it's like, oh, you know, oh, there he is. No way, he's wearing the same clothes as he did in the video, you know. Blah blah blah, you know. And uh, you know, you kind of thing, right? That would be Tiger Woods, but instead. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, there would still be jealousy and anger from uh, women and society and manginas and stuff like that about it, but uh, he would somehow escape it. See, you can sidestep 
a lot of the dangers in life just by making good decisions, right? Even they're still there. The dangers are still there, but you can totally sidestep them, right? You know, it's just like you're just it, there's a there's a dangerous road and there's a safe road. You just turn left instead of right, and then you just missed the whole thing, right? You don't have to be a hero because you just didn't fucking go down the road, right? So you can sidestep a lot of problems. The best way to sidestep, uh, if you want to, you know, like look at what marriage does to you. This is what it does to a guy like Tiger Woods. Imagine what it's going to do to you. You know, this is like this guy had it all, right? So, you know, quick, quick recap of this guy. He marries this Swedish girl. Now, I know Swedish girls very well and I uh, spent some time in Sweden. I've been, you know, that, and, and I used to speak some Swedish. You know, I, I know a lot about Sweden. Uh, Swedish girls can be pretty cool. And I can tell you this, it's, you know, it's not the biggest compliment in the world. But Swedish girls, um, when you, when a Swedish girl goes outside Sweden, everybody thinks she's hot, right? She's got blue eyes, blonde hair. She's kind of got this, uh, I don't know what it is. It's a certain look, right? And that look is a, is a unique look and people like that look, right? But, but what Swedish people never understand is like the like kind of really average girls or really you know, below average Swedish girls will go outside Sweden. They'll become movie stars in Hollywood. Meanwhile, there's like way more smoking hot girls just fucking cruising down the street, in, you know, in the fucking supermarket in uh, Sweden. You know, just way fucking hotter, right? And then these girls who were like supposedly beauty queens and all this shit in Hollywood, it's because they, they get out of Sweden and all of a sudden they're put, you know, there's just a lot of hot girls in Sweden. There's, there's like a couple places where there's like way underrated girls and one of them is Sweden. Uh, the other one is Vietnam, you know, just smoking hot girls, you know? fucking smoking dangerously fucking burn your eyes off hot you know and uh but either way so his wife was one of those average or below average i would say definitely below average if she was in a his wife what is her name was i forget her name but it doesn't really matter but if she was in a like i say high school class if you find her high school class yeah, look at her she was she was below average for sure no no hottie right but she gets out of sweden all of a sudden she's like woo, you know hottie you know Gets the fucking one of the richest guys in the world, right? So, so he marries this girl. He made a bad mistake right there because I think not that you can't marry an average girl. You shouldn't date an average girl. I've dated plenty of average-looking girls, but at least you need to know it. Don't be a fucking fool. Is what that's a lot of the message of Roni Man. You can know you're doing something. You can do it. But the, the problem is a lot of guys don't know. You know, like Tiger probably goes to Sweden and he's like, "Holy shit, look at all these girls," you know, and then he looks back at his wife's fucking cow face he's like fuck what was i thinking you know like this girl's not even like jesus you know she looked hot you know in comparison right you know in vietnam they have a saying like you know uh, a vietnamese girl like never goes back to vietnam because you don't take wood to the forest right you know it's like once she's out you know you just in cap you know enjoy right uh you come back and it's like competition's insane right so either way so he married this girl i doubt he knew i don't think so Having been traveling my whole life, I doubt it. I don't think he fucking knew. I think he was busy. I think he saw her. I think she was open sexually like Swedish girls are, are. And he was like, this girl's awesome. He didn't think of her as like just a Swedish girl. He just thought of her as this unique person, right? But if he was out there pounding a few hundred Swedish girls, he probably would have said, wait a second. Is this one so hot, this particular one, right? Is her personality so good? Is is her face so cute? Is is she, you know what I mean, such an angel to me? Is she so great at sex? Right? He might have said, oh, this girl's like below average. Fuck, what was I thinking? He looks like, uh, it's kind of embarrassing actually. But either way, so he marries her and we all marry. We, I mean, not so we all marry. What am I saying? Uh, guys often marry in the world and, you know, we just kind of forgive it. We look the other way when we see something weird like this where, you know, a guy is like super hot and he's with this girl's really average. It happens all the time. Happens all the time. Low self-esteem, lack of knowledge. Whatever the fuck it is. A lot of different things. Guys regret it later. And it all goes back to the contract of marriage. You sign this goddamn contract and you're fucking locked to this girl. So, you know, whatever fucking, you know, everybody knows that short term thinking is no good. Right. So, for example, you get you, you, you know, you I don't know. Let me think of a good example here. But basically, like what you see when you originally see something and what you see later are different right so the first time let's say you're an art historian and the first time you see a you know a monet or whatever you know you're going to look at it and you're going to see it a certain way but then as you study and study and study and study and see deeper and deeper and deeper you're going to look at that painting with so much more depth and understanding that's just amazing i i can just tell you a quick quick thing i helped to translate one time 
uh, a Japanese master's uh, thesis on Japanese gardens. And uh, she asked me if I could translate it. So I was working with her. And uh, it was really interesting, actually. And uh, I thought, oh, this is going to be not interesting at all. Japanese, you know, those gardens where they have like the, the gravel and the rocks in the middle and the, and the bonsai trees and Kyoto and stuff. And I, I just thought they were the boringest things in the fucking world because from my perspective, where's the fucking grass? Where's the fucking ball? We're, let's have some fucking fun, right? These fucking Japanese gardens, you can't even walk around, right? They're all the, the, all the rocks are like meticulously, you know, groomed. And, you know, it's like you can't go lay in the sun out there or anything, you know. It's just like the exact opposite of the way I like to live, which is like very hands-on and getting in there, right? But after I read this fucking thesis, I, I really changed my mind, actually. I, I really like could appreciate, actually, what all those rocks mean, why they're in certain places. And when I go to a Japanese garden... This is despite myself. I didn't fucking mean to do this. Sorry, guys. You know, I didn't mean <laughs> I didn't mean to think deeply about Japanese gardens, but this is how it is. That fucking life is, right? You come across something, you study it, and all of a sudden you see the beauty in it, right? You see, well, fucking hey, that's heavy, man. There's some shit going on there. Like, no wonder. Oh, the reason why that rock's there is because, you know, this and that, and you figure it out, right? So it's kind of fun to kind of see that, right? It's just one more thing. So two guys, two women see the same thing, and then, they have different experiences, right? Depending on what they know, okay? So what you know, okay, so drop back to the point, is what you know about a woman when you first meet her, when you marry her, is completely different than what you know a month later, six months later, nine months later, a year later. You know, you've heard her on the phone. You've heard her lie. You you found out that she married you for the money because you heard her on the telephone, you know? Or you found out that she wasn't, maybe she had more lovers than you thought, right? And you just like, over time, you start to find out all this stuff about her. And you're like, holy shit, this girl wasn't at all what I thought, right? There's going to be the rare girl. You're going to find out more and more good things. But generally, it's not the case because usually girls are putting their best foot forward, right? They, you know, obviously, they want to get married, right? So now before you say guys do the same thing, it's fucking different, dude. Guys actively try to avoid hookups with girls and marriage with girls, you know? It's like we're not out there fucking buying wedding magazines and dreaming of fucking walking down the aisle. No, we're fucking avoiding it all we fucking can, right? You know, it's like I, no thanks, you know, like I try to, you know, it's like the plague for me, you know, it's like the worst mistake you could make. And not the worst mistake, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, that's not true, actually. There's worse mistakes, definitely. But this is one of the most biggest mistakes a guy and the most common mistakes guys make is getting married. There's no reason for this guy to get married. Why the fuck should Tiger Woods, right, which is a handsome fucking guy, he's drunk. Girls would jump on his dick right now in this picture. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on, dude. They would fucking definitely fuck this guy. Two seconds, right? You know, he's handsome. He's got it going on. Why the fuck, you know? Ugh. So he married. He got fucking, he made the big mistake. So then, of course, girls threw himself at him and he fucked a few girls. I don't know. It sounds like he had a few girls going on at the same time. I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't see that as a big, um, I, I look at that differently than maybe the average guy because I realize how easy it is to get girls. So it's like, yeah, when you're, you know, especially in this position, it's easy for the average guy to get girls, actually, once you understand girls. But especially if you're in a you know, unique position of power, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's almost like, it really is almost like, how can I not have too many that I don't come across too many psychos, right? You know, try to find the better quality ones in that group, right? Rather than just have endless, endless, endless girls, right? Um, that's more the game after a while. It's not uh, not exactly a numbers game. I mean, does if you had a bunch of, you know, drunk sluts, you know, is that really so meaningful? Would you have some, some you know, a bunch of sweet hotties? Who you know are smart, you know. I'd rather have that, right? So either way, there's a there's a there's a numbers game, there's a quality game, and all that. But um, so Tiger Woods, fuck. I mean, don't jump on the bandwagon with fucking society, you guys. Don't do it. Don't allow your jealousy. If you have jealousy, right? I'll talk about this in another episode. But if you have jealousy, you got to get rid of it. Okay. If you want to be a cool guy, if you want to improve yourself, especially in this thing, because it's a very sensitive thing. We're talking about women here. We're talking about something that's super, super sensitive to guys. Let's let's just go through here. Mugshot is jarring. So it's again, this is a woman who wrote this, and she tried to tear this guy apart. She was making fun of him. We're gonna look at the next article that came out in USA Today next. Okay, so it's jarring. He's 41 years old. 
Greatest icon, sad, unacceptable, horrifying, shocking, you know, woods, the rich, powerful, popular, cultural, rock star, who should be metaphorically on top of his game. Yeah. Even, you know, he talks about golf, but you know what she's talking about, his game of life, right? Now eludes him. He has come apart once again in the most public way possible. I mean, dude, the guy got a drunk driving. Like, it's pretty common, you know. I've never had one, but it's pretty common to get a drunk driving. This is not like, this is not like, I don't know, Bernie fucking Madoff or, you know, you know, Jeffy Dahmer. I mean, come on. Is it, are you at the fuck, are you the worst guy in the fuck? How many drunk driving felonies are every night? I mean, come on. Like, are all these guys like that? They're just fucking total losers because they, they, you know what I mean, came apart of the seams and lost everything because they had a drunk driving? This is fucking bullshit. It's fucking propaganda by women. They're, what they're doing is they're trying to drive him down further because he still has some popularity. But the main mistake he made, like I said, is he got married. So if you wouldn't have gotten married, this would not be possible. The whole society jumping on his back. You know, you can't see his back, but it's, it's it must be like the strongest back in the world. He's got all society s- sitting on there trying to fucking drive him down, right? And he he, let's say he had a bunch of women and however many women he had, and and he was single, Ooh. they couldn't stick anything on him, right? So that's the problem is is if 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 the guys who don't choose to get married and choose and and also you know are very successful women. Society doesn't really know how to fuck them over and yet. They're, they're figuring it out, you know. They'll try to get it with other things like drunken driving or just some bullshit, some, some stupid thing, but smart people will see through that quickly, right? It's very difficult. How they get you, how society destroys you, how they lock you in to the bear trap, the fucking, the, 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 the punji sticks with poison, the, 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 the trap that you can never escape, how they do it. It's, it's marriage and if you can just avoid this one trap, just this one trap, just don't just say no like Nancy Reagan said, you know, just say no. And 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 you avoid all these problems. This guy should be the man. I still think he is the man, right? It's gone uh, bad to worse and, you know, she's talking about his back surgery. So he's kind of, okay, this one here, yeah, I'm going a little bit off here, but I would say she's basically hinting, yeah, four back surgeries, blah, 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 blah. I think she's hinting his physical power is not what it used to be, right? You know, which is guys love to talk about their physical power declining, don't they? Oh, guys love that. Don't you love that? Oh, I can't, I, I can't get enough of that. You know, that's the best thing. You know, guys love talking about your, your inability to fucking, you know, do shit. And maybe you're, you can't do other things. Like maybe you can't get a fucking hard on is always the kind of, you know, deep physical problems. So it's like she's attacking this guy in every sense, you know. So he goes, the chart and the rise and the fall, man, who had it all, and then watched it crumble away, all of it self-induced, right? What did he really do? All he did was get married and get a drunk driving. I mean, it's, you know, drunk driving is like everybody, Johnny Carson had drunk driving, you know, so many, many famous people have had drunk driving. It's a common thing. You're looking, drunk driving, fucking, you know, celebrity on Google, you're going to see tons and tons, and then they didn't get barreled like this you know they 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 was like hey usually what happens here's what you here's what usually happens you have to compare what's happening to what usually happens so that you can kind of put it in perspective what usually happens with a guy like this what usually happens is very 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 fucking simple is the guy gets caught for drunk driving okay and they they show a picture of him not looking so good it's usually not the it's usually not the um the one from the uh police it's usually a picture of him like slinking away or you know something like that you know uh avoiding reporters right um this is a hit hit picture here it's trying to get him the worst possible look for him right and then what usually happens is when when guys get caught for drunk driving is they usually say they're going to go to they have a problem with alcohol they usually say that and then you say they're going to go to get some help from some recovery center right that's generally what happens and then and then you all of a sudden get some quotes in there is like how, you know, recovery is so important and it's good for people not to drink and, you know, alcoholism is, you know, so percentage of the population. It can happen to anybody. Here's the number for fucking, you know, some, you know, treatment center and 
AA and all that, and everybody, you know, the comments are like, oh, good luck, one day at a time, and shit like that, right? That's that's what usually happens when a guy gets drunk driving, right? Why didn't it happen this time? Why was this article written so fucking different than what another guy's article would be written about? It's because it's a fucking hit piece. And you got to know this because if you're successful, you're going to be that guy. Imagine your face on there. It's going to be your face because they're going to try to fuck you over if you're successful. They will. And if you marry, then you put your balls and it's, you know, you're putting your balls on the fucking chopping block and you're handing them a Chinese fucking uh, one of those big wedge knives. Right. You know, you're like, hey, please go ahead. Chop away. Right. You know, when you marry, that's what you're doing. You're taking you're giving away all control. And that's what happened. Tiger's only mistake, and this guy is the worst candidate for getting married. I mean, he obviously loves pussy. He has tons of money. He travels all the time. You know what I mean? He loves to play golf, which is a typical guy's game, away from the women, right? You know, it's like guys who take women play golf. It's like, fuck, you know. It's like this joke, this golf joke, you know. It's like guys play golf, and, and the, 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 usually they don't take their wives. And this one time, the guy, the one guy takes his wife and doesn't tell his friends, and they show up, the three guys are like, and they see, they're like, see, they're like, oh fuck, he's got his wife. Like, what the fuck, you know? So the guy realizes, oh shit, I made a mistake. So, and the girl feels bad. So she, she goes, he hits it in the rough, right? So she goes in, she goes in the trees, and she's like, honey, hit it this way. It's right over here. So he hits, it, he bangs it over there, but it hits a tree, and then it bangs her in the head, and kills her, right? So then uh, a, a year later, they're playing golf on the same hole, and then uh, the guy hits the ball in the same rough, and uh, he looks down and starts crying. And then uh, his friends are like, hey, you know, it's okay, man. It's, it's, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it's, it's a year, you know, you're going to get over this. And he goes, he goes, fuck, I just remembered. He's like double bogey this, this whole last year, you know. So, <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's, you don't bring your fucking wife to play golf. You fucking play on your own, right? With the guys, maybe a flask of fucking scotch or something. You know what I mean? You're out there fucking doing your thing, right? In, in, in some countries you can actually, uh, well, I won't say that, but. Some some countries there's there's pretty friendly uh, caddies you know, uh, females and uh, that can be uh, pretty good too. Uh, you're out there all alone, uh, but um, so okay. So let's look at the this is the first article where they're really making fun of him. But then it got too much for society. So the second article uh, is uh, let's see where is that uh, uh, this one here we go. Second article uh, from also same site USA Today right. Uh, it's a uh, yeah for for the win, which is the USA Today Sports up in the top right, and uh, Tiger Woods DUI arrest isn't something to laugh at. So the first one was something to laugh at, right? And even the picture, look at the picture on the right. It's not quite as bad as that picture. It, yeah, it's something a little different. There's maybe they had several or they edited that one or something. Somehow, somehow he looks better. Like you see on the left, here he is, a normal guy looking good on top of his game. Right now, who wrote this? A guy. A guy wrote this. Luke. Right. Uh, so okay. So now they're starting to kind of, so you know, more mainstream media is starting to catch up with this, and they realize it was unfair, you know, to attack this guy so fucking brutally in the first article. But they actually don't ever believe this bullshit. That they knew what they were doing, and they did it on purpose. And the anger from the women. Because he was so successful to all the women. And, and women don't mind if you fuck a lot of women, actually. But the problem is getting married. And uh, I guess there's a few problems. One is the writer would have loved to be one of the girls that he fucked. You know, uh, you know, but she wasn't, right? So she's probably pissed off about that. And then also, she, uh, the women who were watching it, like I said, they weren't the ones that were involved. The girls that were involved were probably much happier. You don't see them writing articles. Right, because they they obviously had a good time, uh, but um, wasn't going to say what else. I will come back to that. Okay, so let's go to this article here. Infidelity scandal raging around him. Everybody thought was a superhero was suddenly vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, whatever. Yeah, there he is. Uh, make you know. Uh, let's see here. Public apology. Right. So he's. Why is he apologizing? I mean, really. You know, seven years. Oh, oh, this is back when he had the infidelity. Oh God, that's even better. Yeah, he looks younger there. Yeah, so he's 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 apologizing for being for fucking women. I mean, women fucked him. They should apologize too, right? You know, he fucked women. They fucked him. I mean, does anybody doubt that this was consensual? I mean, come on. Who's worse? You know, 
these fucking women chasing the married guy and trying to fuck this guy and get his money or the guy who's like being bombarded with chicks and everybody knows okay everybody knows if you have a fucking brain you know that guys can't say no to pussy every woman every married woman every every daughter every woman if they're honest they know if a hot woman propositions their husband he's gonna fuck them and anybody you know there's gonna be the rare exception you know the guy's not in the mood you know he's busy whatever but you know they've done tons of tv shows on this where they'll have guys waiting for their girlfriends and then they have these hot girls especially in japan they had some great shows and they would see the girl would come up and say oh what are you doing and he's like oh i'm waiting for my girlfriend she's like well you know you want me to give you a blowjob or whatever you know while you're waiting you know and the guy's like uh yeah <laughs> 74% of the guys just like right then were just down, you know, like, hey, let's go in this uh, public bathroom right here, right? And then the other the other percentage uh, was either, most of them were, I think the other, I don't know what it was, it was something like the other 21 were like, hey, let's meet later on, like tonight or tomorrow. And then the other 4% were like, no, I can't do that to my girl, right? They did the same thing to to, uh, to girls and, they, and they, a lot of them said no, right? Uh, and uh, that can be going in, gone into, don't read too much into the angels there, but just so you know about guys, if guys, it's offered to them, they just take it. You know, it's like the idea that guys can't take it is just fucking ridiculous. If you've ever been offered sex by women, especially hot ones, really easy on a regular basis, you know, it's just like impossible to fucking, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's totally full of shit that guys can do it. And I think guys who say this have never had it happen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. And they're really fucking lying to you. A guy who's had it happen to them, they can talk. But the thing is, they never want to talk publicly about it, right? Guys never want to talk about this stuff. Guys will always just agree with it in public. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should turn that down. You shouldn't do that, right? Shouldn't Guys shouldn't do that, right? But, you know, and he probably thinks that's true. He probably thinks he would turn it down. But in reality, he would not, right? And uh, we, you could prove this anytime you want. Just get some girls to go up to guys and make offers, and they've done it on TV. You can watch it. So guys can't turn it down. So, so he fucking, that was his biggest mistake. He couldn't turn it down, which is what guys do. Just that he had more girls throwing themselves at him. Okay, so he's a terrible guy. He doesn't have competitive golf, time frame, return. He's like really bad. And then, then the picture again, right? So it's again and again this picture, right? What are they doing here? They're, they're really like the message is pounding home, right? He's, he's really down, right? He had a DUI. Give me a fucking break. His bank account's still looking fucking fine. He's probably laughing right now watching TV or some shit, you know. Okay. Uh, da, 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 he was a phenomenal athlete. What was I going to get to here? There was something in here. Uh, da, 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 this basic human. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, now they're making this thing like like mainstream media is kind of making this thing like, hey, you know, it was, in, you know, you know, you know, like it was it was it was not, you know, the worst thing, you know, uh, you know you know like forgive him don't be so you know and then of course they another dig in there uh horrible things he could have happened while getting in the wheel of intoxicated you know tragic consequences you know nothing happened right nothing fucking happened everybody i don't know what percentage of guys drive drunk but i'd like to see the stats on that one if there was a you know like a, a something that could 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 measure your alcohol in every car at every day from every person every policeman every guy in the whole world you would see that there's a ton of people driving drunk. Um, and until self-driving cars come out, that's not going to change. Uh, guys drive drunk uh, and girls drive drunk. And it's just pretty common. They get caught pretty rarely. And, uh, you know, eventually they will be caught. But that's all it says. It doesn't say how many, right? So basically, he's being, uh, you know, again, they still haven't said, like, the typical society coming behind this guy. Like, you know, he's going to go to a 12-step program. He's going to. He's going to get better. He's just one more fucking hammer. And I, I was looking, you know, the funny thing is I was looking for stuff. Other guys, because when I watch the news, I see it differently than other people, you know. I, this is how I read the news. It's always like through the lens of MGTOW, right. And when I look here at, uh, I tried to do a search here for more guys, right. So I wrote successful guys always get attacked in the media was my Google search. But you can see that nothing comes up. 250 million results, but nothing comes up that we want to see. So basically, I wanted to see someone like Charlie Sheen, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, there's a, there's a number of people. Obviously, the stories can be complicated, but let's Charlie Sheen is a perfect example. You know, I didn't even think of him this morning. But yeah, he's a perfect example of a guy who was two successful women, 
too fucking brash, too manly, too cool, did his own thing, did not give a flying fuck. And he had a drug problem, obviously, you know. But uh, that's not, he's not the only guy. There was like a, it's a pretty big thing out there. You know. <laughs> yeah, look in the fucking papers, Oxycontin and all that shit, you know. 12-step meetings don't have, you know, they're not empty, right? There's people in there. Charlie Sheen's not the only fucking guy, right? But but what, that wasn't his big mistake. His big mistake was being a cool guy and fucking a lot of women, having them on boats and uh, not giving a fuck. Uh, that was his main crime, you know, Charlie Sheen. That's what caused the main anger, okay? I'm, I'm not saying that the other things didn't, you know, weren't the logical reason. Okay, so basically, if you study sales, okay, there's two reasons why people buy things. There's the real reason, and that's an emotional reason. And then there's the logical reason. So if you're doing sales, what you have to do is you have to hit that emotional reason, right? And then give people the logical reason so they can make the logical reason why they're going to buy it, right? So a guy might buy a, a big truck with a huge engine, right? And then he says, well, you know, uh, you know, so-and-so, you know, 18 years ago had a, you know, he had to uh, bring a tree, you know, to there. And then he comes up with all these reasons, you know, uh, there's this, you know, the, uh, the grapevine is a bit mountain is huge. You know, some guy's engine overheated, you know, got to have that power, you know, logical reasons. But the real reason is he wants to be a cool guy, pull up next to two honeys and have them blowing him in his truck. Right. That's what he really wants. Right. And uh, that's that's his main goal. But he, he uses these logical reasons. But his emotional reason is the real reason why he puts plunks that money down. And that's the way guys are. Right. So. The real reason why these guys are getting attacked, Charlie Sheen, uh, you know, and all, you know, just it's endless. It just restart reading the news with this in mind. As soon as you're successful with women, Charlie Sheen was different because he was single, so it was harder to get him. Charlie Sheen was a more moving target. He had to get really bad before he could get attacked, right? Uh, and it, it was not easy. It was not easy. There was a lot of jealousy about that guy because his father, Hollywood, handsome, you know, successful since he was young, endlessly fucking girls. Uh, but when the drugs were the finally the thing that allowed mainstream media and the feminists to finally just destroy that guy. And when they had Charlie Sheen in the fucking bear cave, there was a million people fucking riling him up and fucking with Charlie Sheen until he just went insane, right? He was under the attack. If he could tell, I, I would love him to tell the honest story of what, what it was like for him when he was under that attack. Because that is something that is just like very rare. Very few guys go through it. And nobody talks about it afterwards. There's very few guys who are attacked by the media and they finally say it. There's guys like Julian Blanc who talked about this openly. And I really respect that. Because he was attacked by the media in every way possible. Right? And and he went he went open about it. Most guys, they just... They just move on and they try to fucking ignore that it happened and they don't share anything they learned and what they what they went through, right? You know, this is one thing of MGTOW is like getting out there and telling people the truth about what you went through, your mistakes, you know, what decisions you made and why at certain points and why they were good or why they were bad instead of just like bragging about shit, right? So uh, here's another one I did. So this is what we, okay, so let me, let me get that. I, I search successful guys always get attacked in the media, right? What were my what, what did I get from Google here? I got fuck all. Nothing. Nixon is gone, but his media strategy lives on. Marketing strategy behind Trump's success. When did white men become bad guys in America? It's a man's world and it always will be. Why is he so mad to be losing the fight? Scorned lovers are not always men. Acid attacks. I hate to break it to feminists, but white privilege is a myth. White House secretary attacks media. You know, this is like what the fuck does this have to do? There should be a list, guys, of guys who've been fucked over because they were too cool, right? It's endless. There's a million Charlie scenes. Fuck, it's been like since since Hollywood started. There's been guys, as soon as they make that one mistake, getting married is usually the main one, but it could be drugs, right? Other things, right? Some, some Something that they can't escape. That's so bad, it's so terrible that they can't, they can't live, it, they can't uh, overcome it. So let's go with another one. I tried to do another search for this article because I was trying to find more guys, right? How men who sleep with many women have their careers destroyed was my search. And here's the fucking result. This is what I found with this Roni Man channel. Every time I try, I have my own examples and I say them in the podcast, right? But
But every time I try to get more information, you know, that backs it up or, you know, other stories, it's not there. Fuck. Society does not fucking publish this shit. You can see it in a Google search. Okay, so men have their women careers destroyed. Why does a woman sleep with her boss? Is the number one result of men who sleep with many women have careers destroyed. Now, Google is a very accurate search engine, right? There's no conspiracy going on here. The articles are not there, okay? They're not, they don't exist. Why does a woman, so this is basically like going from a woman's perspective and they're trying to stop women from fucking guys, basically, right? So that basically what they're doing is I searched men who sleep with many women. They're trying to stop that part in this first link, right? So that women don't sleep with the guys so that, you know, they can't even be successful women. They, they want to stop that. The first link, right? Affairs in the military, life or death. Why does lust, sex and lust keep destroying popular men? I'll tell you why it does. You know why? Why does sex and lust keep destroying popular men? It's not because sex and lust are destroying them. Okay. That's not destroying the guys. Sex and lust did not destroy Tiger Woods. The mainstream media and people, feminists, destroyed Tiger Woods. And they keep destroying Tiger Woods. And they keep destroying Charlie Sheen. His fucking another woman was no big fucking deal. That had not, that, 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 a lot of guys, I mean, people, 50% of guys, I think it's like 50%, it might be 70% of people cheat in their marriages, right? But just people don't know about it. So I guess, I guess the one thing, the mistake he made is it got, he got public. Right? That was probably his biggest mistake after getting married. One was he got married. Two was what he did got public. But I want to stop there and tell you, talk about this. Why the fuck is what you do so bad that you have to hide it? That's part of being a Ronin man. It's like, fuck everybody. Tell the fucking truth. Live your fucking life. You know, why can't we... If guys cheat on their wives, okay, and if women cheat on their husbands, why can't guys talk about it? Why can't... Why is it such a fucking secret? Okay? Marriage is a fucking joke. It's a contract with the state. It's a totally fucking scam. And then you, you, you don't abide by the contract and you're a bad guy. Contracts suck. Everybody hates contracts. Who fucking likes lawyers? You know? Everybody hates lawyers. Lawyers, contracts. Everybody hates all that shit. Right? Gobbledygook. You know? Everybody hates all that. That's what, that's what, a, contract, that's what a marriage is. It's all this stuff and there's like gobbledygook the contract in marriage is very simple but actually they don't tell you the truth of the risks when you sign it it's one of the rare situations where there is no uh, cooling off period you know in most when you buy a car you 30 days later you can bring it back and say you know I, I i bought it under the wrong impression right wives there should be like a, a many year you know uh cooling off period for guys where they find out she's a total slut and they're like hey let's just cancel this thing she doesn't have to pay me back for all the dinners and stuff and you know, but let's just, you know, she can go in her own way. But no, 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 no. Marriage, once you fucking sign it, man, you are fucking fucked. <laughs> that is it, man. And sex and love are not destroying men. What's destroying men is society using those to destroy men. Sex and lust are normal. Everybody has sex. I fucking fuck so many chicks and so many married girls. And, and they just fucking want to fuck, okay? Now... You can fuck them or you can not fuck them, but don't look down on them. And don't look down on people that have sex. It's just fucking stupid. Sex and lust are not destroying powerful men. Pow Society is using anything that it can to destroy powerful men. Okay? Sex and lust are just one of them. The, any personal mistake they make, anything that they can blow up into a scandal to destroy a successful guy, and hopefully you, is... Being a target of this is a great sign that you're kicking ass, you know. I mean, of course, the best thing is to be kicking ass and avoid it. But, but being targeted means that you're, you know, you're up in your game and you're all of a sudden you're on a new level. People want to destroy you, right? So it's not actually that bad in a way because it means that you're kicking ass. You're like a tiger. You're a mini tiger woods, right? So sex and lust are not destroying. Uh, let's see. Women destroy themselves. You know, uh, women give, men give up on women and checking magic... How many of you slept with things men do to ruin their own sex life? A sex addict. Okay, now we're talking about sex addicts, right? You know, oh my God, what a crock of shit. Marxist feminists ruin lives. How men and women destroy each other. I wanted to know examples of guys like Charlie Sheen and guys like Tiger Woods 
who obviously got fucked over, and also Bill Clinton, you know, had their careers destroyed because they slept with too many women. You can't find the answer to that because it doesn't exist in Google because nobody writes about it. Nobody realizes it, you know. So I hope it's been helpful. I just want to kind of get you so when you're reading the news now, is like immediately you start to you, you 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 can kind of see behind the scene and start to say from a like another perspective like what is really going on here because your first impression might be to jump on the bandwagon like I said in the beginning your first impression might be like hey that evil Tiger Woods you know there he is you know bad bad man you know and then you then you you're like wait a second wait a second gotta take the red pill again this morning wait a second wait a second what did this guy really do what, what did he murder four hundred people did he did he drive his truck through, you know, Times Square? Did he set a truck bomb off? You know, did he poison people in some curry and, a, you know, like a 4th of July dinner? No. What he did was he signed a marriage contract, right? That was the main thing. And he was a cool guy and successful. So those are not the worst things. That, oh, shit, those aren't the worst things, you know. There's other worse things than that, you know. And then you start to say, wait a second, what else is going on here, right? What's the fucking picture? What? Why is this picture so... Well, who else uses the mugshot? You know, it's like... Every the mugshot just endlessly, right? The mugshot just it just in the other in the in the next the mugshot just keeps going, right? The fucking mugshot, you know, because that's the thing. That's the that's the um, that's the hook. That's the hook is like that's the thing that says it all. But what does it really say? It doesn't say it all. It doesn't say it all at all. All it says is fucking guy's drunk, you know. He's like, I mean, is is his nose? Is this like, is this like a picture of like you know that meth before and after pictures, you know? What meth does to your face? Look at the guy's face. Look like he's ready to party, right? Or he's like, he's like, hey, you know, Ronnie man, where's the fucking bathroom? <laughs> oh, Tiger, it's uh, down the down the hall there on the right. Yeah. Oh, somebody's in there. We'll just go piss in the in the sink or whatever over there. You know. Oh, okay, you know. And he just goes on. He's just a normal fucking guy, right? So there you go. Tiger Woods being attacked. Just one in a million. Actually, there's not that many super successful guys, so you don't see this that often, but. As you become successful, it will happen in your social circle on a smaller scale. So learn from these guys. Don't make the mistakes. The biggest mistake is getting married, obviously. But the other one is putting yourself as an object of society's jealousy, which is another another no-no. You know, another thing that if you can avoid it, it's better. If you can silently fuck a lot of girls instead of openly fuck a lot of girls, you'll definitely have be attacked a lot less, even though you're doing the same thing and the girls love it just the same. Uh, but as soon as it becomes public, it all changes, right? Then all of a sudden, people have to like, you know, denounce you. You know, and you're gonna have, oh, I didn't really want to do that. You know, as long as nobody knew, everybody's totally fucking fine because it was totally consensual, right? But as soon as there's an opportunity, you know, then all of a sudden, you have people fucking coming out of the woodwork and, uh, you know, putting putting stories, making stories up, and uh, creating trouble, and uh, I guess kind of. Uh, getting opportunities for their five minutes of fame or whatever they can get to pay off or whatever they they see. You know, maybe they can be a victim again. You know, that's always a popular thing. Being a victim is a good thing. A lot of people love being victims. Uh, and it's a nice, nice position. You could be, a, if you could be a victim of Tiger Woods, wow, you'd be like, Jesus, you'd be on all the talk shows tomorrow. You know, you know, that's easy to get on talk shows if you're, a victim. Any, any girl comes out right now. Let's let's see where this goes. It'd be interesting if some girls start coming out of the woodwork, you know, and start saying, you know, oh, you know, Tiger Woods uh, once, um, you know, he told me he was going to buy Budweiser, but he bought Coors, you know, or, you know, he fucking, uh, you know, fucked, uh, you know, me, and then, you know, he fucked uh, my friend, you know, and uh, that sucks, and that's bad, and we didn't really want it, but we did. But, well, we kind of, you know, <laughs> just another fucking rambling discussion where, like, obviously nothing happened and everybody was fine and insinuation and, you know, fucking that goes nowhere and bullshit. And it's all just a muddy and pull down another successful guy. So, uh, you know, support other guys, guys. Make down. Fucking support guys, man. Don't don't jump on the fucking mangina bandwagon with this shit, you know. We're out there, man. Guys are doing their best, you know. Guys help us. Guys help you. Guys help me. You know, it's fucking awesome, right? So MGTOW's awesome fucking community. Rony Man uh, signing off here. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching, guys.